Hit some Olympic lifts, just uh, some cleans off the blocks, and then jerks off the blocks, and then I'm gonna hit up some corrective. I'll show you guys some more advanced corrective exercises, kind of playing off of uh, what I shared with you last week. Hey man, what's up? You came to train? Oh, a little bit. What's your name? Adam. M? Adam. Adam? Nice to meet you, Adam. Where are you coming from? Ohio, Toledo. Oh, what? Yeah. You got on an airplane to come work out? Not really. Uh, a couple months away from this shitty weather. Yeah? Uh, so, oh, so you're down like just to, for vacation, you're sober? Yep. Yeah. And my grandparents got the lakes down here, so I'm visiting. Oh, okay, cool. Where's that? Up in Clearwater. Oh, all right. Well, cool. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit up some Olympic lifts and corrective exercises for myself. Feel free to use anything you want. You know, for the next two hours, me casa to su casa. And uh, if you have any questions, concerns, anything I can help you with specifically, let me know. All right. I put a picture of, uh, I was meditating last night, mm -hmm. and I was doing a combination of stretching and holosync, and I put it up at like 8.30 on, on Instagram, and like the I realized the top comments afterwards were, no Super Bowl for Elliot, meditating, meditating over Super Bowl, and I realized, I was like, yeah, I just don't have time for that shit, yeah. busy meditating, doing shit that grows me, I just don't have time for fucking entertainment. It was a horrible game anyway. Was it? Oh, it was the worst game I've ever seen. Let alone a Super Bowl. I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy to me how people get so... They're so passionate about it, but yet they're not passionate about shit that actually matters, you know? Like, your life sucks, but you spend your entire paycheck and all of your time and energy and effort on rooting for your team. Fanatics. It's a little strange to me, but I guess if, you, if your life is empty, you've got to live vicariously in that way. But hey, I'm just, I'm weird. I don't even remember how to do this. Overhead, overhead squats. What's up, man? You must be Yusuf. Yes, sir. I recognize because of the Tampa place. Yeah. How you doing, man? How you doing? Nice you to doing meet right? you, man. Thank you. Cool. Are you, um, are you, are you participating in, in the Shrimp Camp Challenge? Uh, it's possible, yeah. I like it. We can talk about that. But either way, hey, use my gym for the next two hours at your, at your leisure. Huh? I've never lifted stone before. Okay, we'll lift that up. You like? <laughs> I like to start off by walking out a little bit. Yeah, warm up. Take your time, really. I'm hitting, I'm hitting a few Olympic lifts. A little bit of corrective stuff for myself. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you. Clearly, I've never practiced that.
go three sets of five cleans off of blocks, three sets of fives, split jerks, and then hit up some crackers stuff. Perspectives. Yeah. You were 14. You always, would you, you always lived here. You grew up here. I lived in Tampa. Yeah. Your whole life. That's a Florida boy. You came from New York. Right? Me? Yeah. yeah yep. Wow. It's a lot different. Yeah, I'd never go back. But yeah, my point is saying that is I can't, um, I can't play ball to the extent that I want to. <laughs> so I was, a, I played point guard in high school, but I can't. It's just not the same after the day after playing. You know, I see let me see, take your shirt off. Let me see what your, what your body looks like. I have a high body posture. You know, my mom is the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah good looking body, dude. I've been working out since I was young. Yeah. It's my obsession. Look straight ahead. So, the best way to know the way your hips are situated by putting your finger, you probably already know this, on the ASIS and PSIS. And a post. Exterior tilt would look a little bit more like that. You're not so much, I mean, you're a little flat there. Stick your ass out a little bit. And you have mobility. Where's the back pain? L4, L5. It's where you sit down, you know? It's almost like by your sacrum. Uh-huh. Sacroiliac. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why my hips are just beyond tight. It's like Zeus is pulling on them. When you say hips, how do you mean your I mean, rotators? I mean my, my hamstrings, mm -hmm. my flexors, they're doing mm -hmm. I just can't, can't spread, you know what I mean? You see girls all the time, we can do this. We know that men aren't as flexible, mm -hmm. but since I was young, there's, there's no going past this. No matter how much I stretch it, no matter how much I, you know, stretch and correct it, you know, squatting low has always been difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's up, man? What's up? Elliot's Dan. Where are you coming from, man? Uh, Tampa. Oh, so you called earlier? Or yeah, yeah, I called like... You spoke to Chris? Yeah, yeah. Ah. About an hour ago. Cool. Can you do me a favor? Fill out one of these papers Chris will give you? Yeah. And, uh, yo, man, you can use my gym for the next two hours, however you want. Cool. Are you, you're not in the challenge, are you? No, I wanted to do it, but, um, it was a little by the time I wanted to do it, so... You know, there are a couple people that dropped out. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and, and since both of you guys live in Tampa, let me get with you before you leave. And I, I mean, if you want to train for it, it's, it's a month away, but there's, st there's space available because a couple guys dropped out for various reasons. Yeah, that's
my program right now is, is bodybuilding, but I like to throw in like one or two athletic days at least. Oh, I can't just be straight bodybuilding. I feel like it's building waste, it's wasteful. Building muscle for no reason. I feel like I gotta put it to use. You know what I'm saying. Inside there, everybody's in the in the back room. Don't worry. Huh? Don't worry. Afraid of comments? Yeah. Some of the comments on the living room, whatever you were like. I can't believe you would sell out like that. <laughs> sell out. That's great. That's so stupid. Kids. But there's more like people backing it up than anything. Yeah. Because really, it's just that they were so cool to be sponsors for the Shrimp Camp yeah. Challenge. So I'm putting on basically an event for free, a spectate, for free for right. spectators, and that's expensive to put on. And the only supplement I've actually used or recommended in videos says, hey, you know what, we'll, we'll be your title sponsor. Fucking magical. Oh, <laughs> Elliot, you broke my heart. Fix it. Mass pathology. That's what Dr. Glazier says when, like, when I get upset and I go back to him and I'm like, dude, like, people are just so mean sometimes in the comments. He's like, you gotta recognize you're putting yourself out there to be exposed to the mass pathology. So basically, like, all the sickness in the world is gonna show up in when you, when you expose yourself to the entire world. So you just gotta take it like that. It's one good way to look at it, right? Yeah. Mass pathology. <sighs> you guys are a train or what? What's his name? Dan? Dan, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dan. Dan, were you warming up too, man? Yeah. Okay. Dan, what's up? something you wanna do, let me know. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up another set here, another set there. And then I'll mess with the stones with you guys too. Alright, well, so take your time, man. So, yeah, yeah, warm up with some light stuff. What I'll do is, um, I got one more set here. I'll put this up there and then I'll set it up and we'll go. What I'm worried about though is that my, my erector spine is not gonna be able to handle that. Yeah, quite possibly. That's part of the reason why I think I have back pain. But you know what? It comes and goes after a crazy workout the next day. I do four days in a row. I can go 100%. One of those days, the fifth day, that's when it starts to hurt. It's on and off. Who knows why? Yeah, I can start picking you apart right now. I'm trying not to. <laughs> because when it's not obvious, when it's not obvious neuromuscularly or physiologically, then I start thinking energetically. Like, what kind of stress is this kid dealing with? Do you, both, do you have both of your parents? You don't have both of your parents. When did your parents pass or separate? Oh. You were 12. No, I was 10. You were 10. So I would start picking on that right away because safety and security is contingent upon your parents. I mean, that's our, the roots of our safety and security. What happened to your parents? Uh, my dad's Muslim. She had Muslim. My mom's Catholic. Yeah. So, so they stay together because you know they love their kids. So there's religious stuff there also. Religion is a foundational perspective that we all, whether we think we do or not, even if you're atheist, you move from a religious perspective because we live in a Judeo-Christian society. Islam is a part of the Abrahamic religion. I mean, it's, it's embedded in our consciousness to such a degree that it could cause us physical pain. So the, the, the bedrock of your, your physiology, your parents, and the bedrock of most of our paradigm being religion, there's, there's shakiness there, right? So I know I start sounding weird, but it's like those are things that I would like to explore further when I look at someone and I'm like, ah, there's no obvious, like right off the bat reason, I start asking about 
parents and shit like that. So I know stress has a lot to do with stress. It. Stress. I mean, you know, all your work too this body, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, stress, working two jobs, being a student. If I had to boil it down to a simple umbrella answer, stress, yeah. Safety and security stress, which you, I mean, you would be dealing with a fundamental safety and security stress. Religion in Paris, <laughs> right? <laughs> Typically manifests in that area, right here. Right. Right, if you study the, the chakra system of medicine, which is, you know, it's like 10,000 years old. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it, it says that there are nerve bundles or vortexes within our peripheral nervous system that link back to our central nervous system that are intrinsically tied to emotional components of the individual. So there's safety and security, there's sexuality, there's personal will and self power, there's love, there's communication, there's higher thought and learning. There, and that, those ideas, those emotions, those intangible concepts show up physically in the body with pain and dysfunction. So like I said, the, the root, right? Root, think about it. This is really, if you look at the nervous system, where does it come right out of? When it shoots down into your, your nerve root, your sciatic, boom, boom, right out here. That's your root system. It's your link to the earth. The earth represents, re represents stability. It all sounds like metaphor, but it's so strange how many times it shows up literally. So your safety and security has been challenged. You were 10 years old, very pliable, moldable at that age. Soft, not firm enough to handle the stresses that end up showing up in your body a few years later. Right. Oh, poetic, metaphorical. I don't try to be respectable in any of these ideas, but they're, fa they're fascinating and they're helpful, I found. So resolving physical pain oftentimes shows up as dealing with the, the, the pathology, the emotional pathology. So you have to consider what's happening at the, at the psychological, emotional, energetic level, as well as neuromuscular and physiologically, if, you, if you've got a mystery in your body. So can you handle that physically? A little, it's a, it's, a, it's a mix, because the brain, the body is the brain. So it's a matter of, yes, physical, but also it has to be linked with an emotional release, an emotional component to it, right? So for example, so for example, the jaw is often associated, the jaw, thyroid, this particular area is often associated with communication and lack thereof, stifled communication often shows up as tight jaw, tight neck. Like a lot of people who it's like, they, when you were a kid and your dad would like always put you down, there was a part of you that just wanted to say, ah, just want to lash out. Well, so you're using the muscular system to hold back the emotion. So for the full release, you need a, a combination of physical release, but also the emotion associated with it. So there's, ah, and the feeling of anger and, and wanting to express yourself verbally or, or physically, and also the movements associated with it, hitting, yelling, using those muscles. Does, does this make sense? Yeah, Good. Yeah, so you found that you get trapped in here. Now safety and security is one of those that require the, the, the bringing forth of, of energy in your legs, your nerve roots. So exercises like squats will help you. Exercises like deadlifts will help you, but there also has to be a, a, an energetic expression associated with the movement. If your root system is weak, the energy doesn't have anywhere to, 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 to hold on to. There's no foundation. Your foundation has been shaken. Religion, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, and parents, biologically. Your roots have been shaken. So when the energy rises in the body, you're recognizing it as the tension in your jaw and your neck and you want to let out. But imagine your energy was more grounded or rooted in itself. So one of the things that's really helpful, take off your shoes. I See, you got me coaching now. I always take off your shoes. <laughs> got me coaching. Bringing energy down into your feet. Take off your shoes, your, your socks also. A person's feet tell you a lot about them also. You ever have uh, foot, ankle, knee pain? Nope. Your, let me see your legs. Lift up your. Cool. All right. I mean, you're fairly 
you're strong. You're, you're really... But you're inflexible at your my within hips. your hips. My hips are just like I said. Zeus is pulling this way on one cloud. He's pulling on the other. One thing that that you would I would invite you to do, and this is I'm, this is just demonstrating, but you know we're just demonstrating playing. But get into a, a half squat position up against that right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good and. Good. Bring your hips away just a little bit. Make sure your, your toes are straight. Good. I want you to sink even lower. Open your mouth as wide as you can. Let your arms hang. And I want you to stay there. I'm going to have you hold it there for a little while. If you start feeling your legs vibrate, that's good. If it doesn't vibrate after about 30 seconds, I'm going to let you do vibrate. Good. Then keep doing it. We used to do those in the same box. Yeah. Cool. This is a good one for you because it helps. Helps you with the grounding energy in your body. Good. Good. I see the subtle vibration in your legs. I want you to actually vibrate them like this now. In and out. Good. Continue. Should I force the breath or relax? Just relax. Find your, widen your mouth. Breathe as you feel. Good. Good. Vibrate a little bit more. Good. As your legs get tired, just allow your body to fall to the floor. Good. Good. So that's one to practice every once in a while to bring feeling back into your leg. Vi vibration is the root word of vibrance, vitality. Bring vitality back into your root system It may be helpful. I'd have to explore a little bit more with you. Another one that's really helpful also is massaging the feet and also grounding in that way. Feel the vibration in your, in your pelvis because that's where you're getting a lot of the, the tension. It's not so much in your legs it seems, it's right in your sacrum. That whole sacroiliac area where you described L4, L5. That's right where it's at, yeah. That's where you're getting a lot of it. So, grounding in that particular way. Also, um, bend and touch your toes also. Good. See if you can get your hand, bend your knees slightly and see if you can get your hands on the ground and start bouncing your knees also. Bouncing like this. Watch me. Yeah. You know it's crazy when I try to when I do some of Paul Chai's um, Qi Gong exercises. He has in that book um, how to eat food. Yep. Okay. This is one that usually, if I'm breathing right, starts to vibrate. Crazy. Good. Okay. Good. Stand up. Say that again. So the vibration that you're experiencing in that exercise is what you want to go for. Also, you want to do things like Actually, that, like that squat. Hmm? So let it vibrate by itself for force. The, if you can, see a lot of times we do the vibration, I'll do the vibration yeah. to, to get it going. So that, but ultimately you want the body to do what is called spontaneous movement. You want spontaneous movement to happen in the body, which basically means it's going to vibrate. When you do the bow, yeah. and you know I tell people that yeah. it'd be cool if you get to vibrate. Or when you do that, you start vibrating. When you do the squat, you start vibrating. It's this whole idea of bringing vibration back to the body. There's some really fascinating work done around trauma by a guy named Peter Levine. But um, the work that he does about trauma release revolves completely around causing spontaneous or allowing spontaneous vibration to happen in the body. So if you study some of his work, he'll, he'll show you different methods by which to bring vibration back into the body. That one, the touching, the toe touching. This one is another really good one. Just kind of staying here, like kind of touching the ground or putting yourself in a compromised position where the leg starts vibrating. The point of it is to bring life back into dead parts of the anatomy. Vibration, like I said, is vitality. Vibration is literally vitality. We are, I mean, if you study quantum physics and if anybody study like the, the roots of religion and, and hermetic philosophy, we're all vibration, we're all energy, just vibrating. I mean, if they get really down to the, to the, to the depths of our cell, at the cellular level, what are they find? Vibration, it's just vibrating. We are vibration. So by doing exercises and, and using different modalities to bring spontaneous back, vibration back into the body, we heal the, the deadened 
tissue. That tissue has, the energy has moved out of that tissue and up into another part of your body, the region of your body. Because of trauma? Because of trauma. Your roots have been severed. So, when there's no feeling of grounding, the energy rises up out of that particular area. There, there's, it'll either be increased to the point of, of pathology or decreased. That's why we have itises and osises, right? It, like, you know, a disease of, ex, of extent too much is an itis. You know, everybody's got all kinds of fucking itises. We live in an abundant society where there's too much of everything. But there's a lot of osises, and that's where there is a removing of bio biological energy. You know, there's 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 physiological components to it, nutrition, but also the the life force is removed from certain parts of our body. A really good example is someone who has who has uh, recently re over they've gone through a trauma and they've got a blank look on their face. You talk to them, it's almost like. They're not even there. They're like now they're alive, but there's n there's an osis. There's no energy in their expression in their face. They almost look like a ghost. Or even a better one is like when you when there is a trauma or you're scared or something. You now people's like their lips go no their lips go white. Like yeah. you're as white as a ghost. Yeah. The fuck is that? You know? Yeah. Of course I sound crazy and I'm eccentric and I talk fast and shit. But if you just look at what happens in our lives, it's very obvious that the body is taking on the physical manifestation of, of the psychological hurt. When someone's scared, or like if you just saw a dead person and your face turns white as a ghost, the energy has been removed. You basically created an osis of energy removed out of your head because it's just too much for the body to handle. It, your body and your, your nervous system is just like, they left. You, right, you separate. I just can't fucking deal with this. So you look at the individual, their face is white and their eyes look vacant. Are you there? Are you there? Snap out of it. That's happening. Yeah. See? Yeah. So with the work of Peter Levine, uh, he talks about how to re to revisit those traumas and then go through the physical behavior associated with what should have happened instinctually. instinctually. What happens oftentimes when we're children? So for example, your parents, they separated? Years old. You might have wanted to cry. You might have wanted to be angry. There might have been something that you wanted to do physically. It could have been anything from vibration in your body just out of complete misunderstanding, confusion, and, and your life, your world was just shaken. There's that word again, shaken. And perhaps a loving grandmother came and was like, sweetheart, it's okay, don't cry. If you're angry, they try to calm you down. It's okay. and they do it out of love. But what happens then is the energy that's associated with releasing the trauma at that particular time is trapped in the body. And, it, and again, it shows up either, either as, a, as a removal of energy or a exciting of energy or a charging or a discharge of energy. That's why. You know, yeah. you know if, um, if, for example, you go and um, you try to talk to a girl, right? And, um, and she just slashes out to you, lashes out at you, slaps you. It's like, I'm just trying to, to be nice, to like go talk to a woman, you know, and I'm 14 years old, I'm just trying to figure out how girls work. And that happens to you, you can very easily become rigid. So you'll, you'll close your heart down. It's like, you know what, I poured my heart out to this bitch. Fuck her, she hurt, my, she hurt my heart. And now you've got this situation where there's emotional pain that will also show up physically. Even if it's after the Oedipal, yeah, dude. It happens to us all the time, all, all of our life long. Just take, a, just take a notice. When you're driving, do you ever get road rage? Not anymore. Okay, do you ever get angry at somebody for something? Of course. Stop for a moment and look at where you're feeling. Just literally stop and say, okay, where, where in my body is this happening? My job. For me, you know what I do a lot of times? I, most of my dysfunction happens here. So I feel my assholes suck up. First thing, I, first thing that happens to me when I get, I start getting tense is like, I pull my ass up. All right, I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then my belly gets tense. First thing that I feel it here first, my gut, my gut, my pelvic floor. Right. That's the area. Yeah. That's the area where it happens to me first. When he gets mad, you know what happens? Right here. You see? So it's happening to us all the time. We have tendencies and habits. So anyway, you got me ranting, so now I got to do my workout. But yeah, anything, anything that brings vibration back into your legs from here down, 
is going to support you. Affirmations are going to support you also. Affirmations of safety and security. I am safe, I'm secure, I have everything that I need and always will. God, the universe, the earth is abundant and will always provide me with what I need. These are affirmations that you're going to use to also work the, the, the head part of the equation. You know, you've got, the, you've got the central nervous system and the cerebral cortex and the peripheral nervous system. Of course, I'm into the body, so I'm talking about vibration in the body. But you also want to talk to yourself differently. You want to tell yourself a different story. Um, Tony Robbins talks about state, story, and strategy. This is his way of describing head, heart, and balls. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Cortex, neocortex, medulla. Id, ego, super ego. Every single time. So with state, story, strategy, it's state. How are you making your body feel? Your state is how are you feeling? Are you feeling stagnant and stale or vibrant and alive? You can create that through different weird exercises that bring vibration into your legs. State, story, what are you telling yourself? I am safe, I'm secure, I'll always have everything that I need. The universe and God and the earth are plentiful, abundant, and will always provide me with what I need to survive in this world. Those types of ideas, is that a story you're telling yourself? Are you affirming that in yourself? Because that's the other part of the equation. And strategy is basically, now what are you going to do? You know, what kind of habits are you going to instill? Do you see? I lost my point. <laughs> Hey, as soon as I finish here, well, I'll set this up. Yeah, dog. Yeah, take it out there. Go and go. Yeah, that's a good way to warm up, too. demonstrated with you before with those little exercises and the vibration. Deep stretches, I've found and I've learned that if you stay in them an exorbitant amount of time, so have you done like the, the deep hip stretches that I showed like when your feet are up on the wall? Yeah, that's the problem. For like, have you stayed there for like 30 minutes? I talked to my girl for half an hour. It was 27 minutes. And the yeah, I was there for 27 minutes. Dude, okay, well it might be okay. You might be doing the right thing. Here's my question. When you're in that position or any other deep stretch position and you come out of it, do you feel the numbness tingling in the legs, almost pain? Yeah. I mean, it's hard, I can walk right away. Yeah. Right. So there's a flood. There's like, a, there's a removal and then a flood of energy in the legs. That's why it's like, you almost can't even get up and walk. That's good, keep doing it. Keep doing it? Yes, keep doing that. You're, you don't want to cause pain. In yoga, they use this term well, called. It's not, it's not bad pain. It's, it's more like, wow, that was. That okay. Was yeah. yeah. You, want to, you want to go the just edge. Yeah. You don't want to uh, tear yourself. But do that, and it, it's an awkward, strange, almost scary feeling sometimes. Almost like when your legs go numb. But it's, a, it's good. It's therapy. Yeah. You want to keep doing that. Here's why a lot of these ideas don't work for a lot of people. Because of the level of concentration that, that needs to be present when you do these exercises. It's almost like you've got to trick your brain into participating in the, in the movement or the position fully. Focus and concentration has a lot to do with it. So you could do the exercise, but you can talk to your girlfriend. You know, it's very different than doing it and envisioning. Just what I like to do a lot of times is visualize. 
visualize your, you, you feel like you've got a lot of crunching and tightening down on the, on the L4, L5 yeah. sacroiliac. Imagine as you're stretching, literally this fucking helps, it's, it, it's amazing. But you imagine the vertebrae that are crunched up next to each other, opening up. You've got to, you've got to, yes, feel it, like not necessarily feel it, but tell yourself, play a mental picture that it's, that it's opening up. That helps because all three of you have to be aligned, otherwise you're crooked. You can't win if any part of your three brains is somewhere else. It, and that's one of the most difficult things for this brain. This brain lacks focusing concentration or the ability for focusing concentration. It's exercise. Your conscious attention. Your conscious attention as opposed to your unconscious. Your unconscious is here. Your conscious attention is here. So you have to put your conscious attention on the development of the, the unconscious or the, or the manifestation of the unconscious, the body. You've got to focus on your body while you're doing these things. A lot of bodybuilders talk about this. A lot of bodybuilders are like, when you're doing curls, yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. see the muscles working and like imagine it's getting bigger and bigger. The shit works. There's even concentration curls for a reason. Yeah. There and and there's scientific research to back this up. I don't know it offhand, but there's scientific research to show that if you pay close attention, you focus and concentrate on it, basically anything. You're, you literally, you can guide the power of your unconscious through focus and concentration with your conscious mind. That's the power of the conscious mind, is that you can take it and you can place it wherever you want to drive all the power of your, of your unconscious into it. So when you're doing, for example, uh, the seated one where you're, where you're vibrating, imagine that your legs are in concrete. You've got concrete casting on your legs and it's not allowing the nutrition that should come from the grounding of the earth to move through your root system. Imagine as it starts vibrating that you're breaking, that it's literally shaking and breaking the, the casting. Now of course that's not happening, but it's a way of using your conscious attention to drive unconscious power. That's some powerful shit right there. Power of the conscious mind is in its ability to concentrate. Except that's like a, it's like a workout. Just like any other muscle, the conscious mind needs to be exercised. And that's one of the ways to exercise it. Cool, we're gonna do we're gonna do stones here, gentlemen. Here you go, man. Hey, do that ten times. Just keep standing around with some new tough shit. Gotta get close to it. Good! 
Don't waste it now. Get close. Take it out. Yep. Ah, oh, come on, let's go. You gotta stick with it over yeah, the top. Don't don't change strategies. That was a wasted rep, yeah. man. Come on, make it happen. Good, over the top. Get close. Good, 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 good. Come on. Yeah, easy. Whew. 